material wherever those streaks are and I have no idea where they are coming from. The issue, look at this amount of stuff that has come Hi off. Guys. Welcome back to another video. Today we'll compare an Amazon special sharpening stone to a proper Japanese sharpening stone. They are supposed to have the same grid, a 3000 and a 1000 side. So they should technically be similar, but I think we'll see that. So I have the Amazon stone already soaked in water, which takes about five minutes. The Japanese stone doesn't need that since it's, it's much harder and has a less porous binding material. Both of these stones are flattened, so we can check how much they wear as we go on during the test. As a test subject, I will use my Scandi knife here. I have it already marked with Amazon and Japanese here, so you can follow along. And first we will we'll sharpen each side and just look at the grinding pattern and I will report about the experience. So let's go. I can already feel that the stone is very, very coarse. This feels very, very rough. You can probably hear it too, if I put the mic right here. So here's how the knife looks after a few passes. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty coarse. I think I'm gonna take a picture and then show you. It's, yeah, you can see it has a lot of scratches. You can even hear it when I, oh, that, that doesn't feel good if you run your fingernail across it. And it made a fair bit of slurry on this stone, if, I, if it would focus here. So now let's try the Japanese sharpening stone with the exact same grid, supposedly. So the feel is already quite different. You can also probably hear it, it's much finer. So here's the grind on the Japanese stone. If I reflect it here, it's quite a bit finer. It's not a huge difference, but it is one I think I'm gonna Again, put you in your picture, but if I, if you listen to it when I scratch my finger across it, this is the Amazon stone, and this is the Japanese stone. It's, it's, it feels quite different. So now we'll continue with the finer sides. I think if you are buying a stone like this at a 1,000 and 3,000 grit uh, range, you probably want a stone that gives you a very, very sharp and fine edge that's nicely polished, otherwise you would buy a much coarser one. So I think this step is even more important than the last one and we'll see what kind of a finish those both uh, stones give us. So let's go ahead with the Amazon Special. So at least from what I feel right now, it's it's much finer than the other side. So that's at least good. So now we're done with this side. I'm gonna show a picture for a close-up right now. But uh, so what I felt is it is finer than the other 1000 side on this one. Is it finer than even the 1000 grit stone on the Japanese one? I don't really think so. And also what happened, if you look at this stone, which is quite is interesting, do you see these streaks, these very, very obvious streaks? And it was not It was only taking away material wherever those streaks are, and I have no idea where they are coming from. We'll see if they also show up on this stone. If they don't, then I think it has something to do with the manufacturing of this, because I wouldn't know why it would happen. It isn't because of my lapping stone, because I lapped this one before on the same stone. So yeah, we'll see. Also, it produces quite a lot of slurry again. If I show this to you, yeah, this is, I mean, look at this. This is all grinding material that's ground away. But let's try the Japanese stone and see how it does. Thank you. 
So this already feels much finer than anything I've sharpened right now in this video. You can hardly even hear a grinding sound and it's, it's very smooth on the surface. So we are done now with the Japanese stone. And if I show it to you, I think the difference is quite obvious. This is the closest to a mirror finish we've gotten yet. If you look at the other side, again, this is the Amazon 3000 grit finish. Just these few spots, um, then the Japanese one, it's much finer. And I will even try to, I will put in a picture, I will put it on my leather strop. What this will do is it will polish all the high spots and leave the low spots or so the deep scratches alone. And this will make the difference in quality much more obvious. If we look at the sharpening stones itself, you can see they are no streaks. I have no idea why this is happening on these stones, but it makes sharpening quite annoying. If you look closer on the picture of the, of the Amazon sharpened one, it only takes away material on these kind of high spots where the streaks are. So yeah, it, maybe it has to do something with the manufacturing that it's very uneven. But yeah, I don't know. And also the amount of slurry that is produced is much less on this on this one. It's pretty much only whatever you're taking away from your knife. So the metal shavings and maybe a tiny bit, but this is so much harder and it will last a lot longer. This, this one is very soft and has, and is very porous. So now we are onto our sharpening test. I have took my kitchen knife, has been a victim on this channel a few times. And I've completely dulled it and also divided it into different sections. So you can see on which side I'm sharpening with which stone. We are going to start off with the 1000 grit side on the Amazon stone and then the 1000 grit side on the Japanese stone. So since this side is coarser, it should also go faster, right? But we'll see how the quality of the grinding material holds up on this cheap stone. And I will see which one will take the most or least amount of time and the quality of the edge. We will, we will only go with these sharpening stones without a strop and see how it cuts the paper. So let's get right in with the Amazon stone. So now we are finished. I'm trying to break the birth right now. You can see an issue. Look at this amount of stuff that has come off. It's extremely gross and it's super dirty because these fine particles just get everywhere. So that's already an issue. So you need paper towels handy to wash your knife off because I can't even properly feel for a burr here. But I think with some light pressure, with some light pressure, I should get it off and then we will hop on the to the Japanese sharpening stone. Now onto the Japanese stone. We'll start right off here. So we are now finished with the Japanese stone. Sharpening time was about the same. So even though this one is coarser, it didn't really, it wasn't really a lot faster, maybe a tiny little bit, but it made a whole lot less mess. I just wiped it off, but you saw it during the sharpening. There's a lot less of this slurry. It's basically just the steel you're taking away and that's uh, submerged in the water. But we'll now do the sharpness, sharpening test and see which one of those worked out better. So we'll do just some simple paper cuts. This whole test is not super scientific. I'm just giving you my impressions as I go along. So let's go ahead. Okay, it does cut it. It's a bit rough, but it does the job. How about the other side? So if we were to go back and forth, it 
it's maybe a bit sharper. There's not a huge difference, but a tiny one. If you look at these cuts close up, you can see this one has a bit more frayed edges. Here the cut is a bit finer. It is finer if you put both of these on a leather strop, I don't think you would notice a huge difference. So now that we are at the end of a test, what did we learn? You can't get a sharp edge with one of these Amazon sharpening stones. They definitely work. They are messier. They are definitely not the grit you order them. They, it is whatever they want. If you want to know more about this, I have made a video in the past where I explained the different grid standards of the different countries and their tolerances and why these aren't what they are saying, especially not the very high 8000 grid stones. However, if you buy something to make a nice edge, especially on like a Japanese kitchen knife or a nice or a candy knife, you really want a mirror polish. I think these Japanese stones are a better option. They aren't all super expensive. You can get cheaper ones. They might be a little bit smaller, but at least you know exactly what you are getting. That's the huge problem with these. That's the huge problem with all these Timo sharpening gear, especially. You just don't know what you are getting. You're just buying anything. If anything is enough, it's okay. But if you want one specific thing, just go with a name brand stone from a knife supplier, especially there are some online that have a very nice uh, collection of sharpening stones from different name brands. And if you pick several stones from one single brand and you pick ascending grids, then you will know that you get finer and finer stones and you can get a nice and good mirror polish. Thank you for watching the video. If you found it interesting, if you learned something, then consider subscribing and giving the video a like. And then I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.